Let's talk about the last one, reduce. And this is a bit advanced and it might be a little bit difficult to grasp at first, but it's good to know that it exists and you can learn more about it by practicing it and reading some documentation on your own. Now, reduce doesn't come as part of the Python built-in function. In order for us to use reduce, we have to do something like this. Now, you've never seen this before, and this is something we're gonna get to in the modules section of the course. But essentially what's happening here is when we downloaded Python interpreter and the Python package, in our case, this REPL already does it for us, we can import something from these func tools. And func tools are what we call a tool belt that we can use for functional tools that comes with the Python installation. And from there, there's a specific function that we can import. So I'm saying, hey, from func tools, from this tool belt, I want you to import the reduce function so that we can use it in our code. Again, something that we'll cover later on in the course. So for now, just copy and paste this line. Next, let's remove some of our list and here use reduce. Now with reduce, we're gonna need a few things. First, we need the function and then we need the sequence or the data. So what's the function going to be? First of all, our data will be our my list. So I'm going to say my list and the reduce function allows us to do something interesting. I can give it, let's say a function and this function, we'll call it the accumulator. And the accumulator takes two parameters. And remember, this is going to be called by reduce. So reduce is going to be in charge of giving these two parameters from the data that we give it, which is my list. The first parameter is going to be what we call the accumulate, or in my case, the ACC. And then here is going to be the item. Now, where it gets really interesting is that when we first pass my list from the reduce, we'll get the first item. The first item will be in this parameter. However, what's this ACC initially? Well, if I just remove the brackets here and show you reduce, you see that we have the function, the sequence, which in our case will be our list, and then the initial. An initial is what the accumulator is going to be. So once again, let's say that we're gonna have the accumulator function that we're not gonna call yet. Reduce is going to do that for us. I'm going to give it the list or the data that we wanna iterate over. And then I'm going to give it an initial value of zero. So we have three parameters here or three arguments that we give it. Let me close the brackets. There you go. Let's make this a little bit bigger here and make sure that I can spell. Now in here, the first item will be whatever is the first item in my list. And then the accumulator is going to default to zero if we don't give it anything, or in our case, we have said that the accumulator is going to be zero. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to return accumulator plus item. Okay, so let's go through this one by one. I'm actually going to print here the accumulator and the item, just so we can see. And then I'm going to run this code. Line 15, int object is not iterable. And this is a little tricky, but we actually don't need the list anymore because reduce is gonna do something interesting for us. So let's just remove this for now and just return whatever reduce gives us in the print. If I click run, look at that. All right, so what just happened? Let's have a look. Reduce allows us to reduce something, some sort of value from the iterable that we give it. So let's go step by step. We have my list. And my list is going to be applied to accumulator through reduce. 
the accumulator is going to take my list and the first thing it's going to do in the first pass through is going to say, hey, what's my accumulator going to be? I'm going to set it to zero. So the first pass through accumulator is going to be zero and item is going to be one, which is what we see over here. And we're going to add it zero plus one. So now we have returned one. Now the second pass through, what's going to happen? The second pass through, the accumulator is going to be what this returned. So the next pass through, whatever this is returned is going to be filled into accumulator. So in our case, zero plus one will be one. An item will be two. One plus two is going to be three. So one plus two equals to three. So the next time around, the accumulator is going to be three. And what we pass through is going to be three as well, as you can see here. And three plus three is six. We've just accumulated all these values and returned one single number, six. We've reduced our list into some sort of data that we've manipulated using, in our case, accumulator, but I could have done anything I wanted here. So if, for example, I change this to not equal 10, what do you think will happen? If I click run, I get 16 because I started my initial accumulator with 10. So it was 10 plus one, then so on and so forth. Now, reduce is really, really powerful because you can do a lot of things with it. It's really, really flexible. And actually, underneath the hood, functions like map, filter are actually using this reduce underneath the hood. So you can actually build your own map and filter function using reduce. Again, reduce is a little hard to understand at first, and it does take a bit of practice to really use it. But it's one of those things that advanced programmers really, really love, and you'll see more and more of throughout your career as you get better and better. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.